Hey everybody, it is November 26, 2007. I am Sonic Sons, and I'm here to talk to you about the new frontier in the programming business. If you're interested about that. It's called Intentional Programming, and it's by a guy named Charles Simon Yi, or Simon Yai, or Simon Jip, anyway. Um, who was, if you didn't know previously, a big shot at Microsoft, and he, like, practically invented Word and Excel and, and all these, and he's this computer genius guy. And you also may have heard that he took a tour on the International Space Station. I think that's what he would. Um, so he's a billionaire on top of all that. <laughs> but he's working on this new project, and it's not very much for the money, at least according to the article I read that gives him most of the information here. The article called, Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Meta. Now, meta uh, is a word or a prefix that means essentially of itself or looking at the big picture of the thing in question. So cognition means thinking. Metacognition means thinking about thinking. Well, he's working on a sort of meta idea, which uh, is something we, we, we do a lot with computers. Uh, we have a computer do some basic task, and then we go kind of meta and we say, okay, you know, do that task ten times, instead of telling it ten times to do that same thing. And then we go meta several more times, and we go through our various things of assembly language, and then we made our basic languages, and then we went into, like, newer languages, like C, and C++ became C++, and now we have Java, and now we have... Well, now we have this track of inventing new languages to do various new things, uh, and Charles is going even more meta to essentially invent a new way of making languages, or like a new way of talking to the computer entirely. All right, so it's called intentional programming. Now, all programming right now is based on text. <laughs> all comes down to a certain text file of source code, as it's called, and the um, computer interprets this and it figures out you know, exact instructions from that source code, which is written to be relatively human readable. We use, like, words sometimes. We use if, then, else, you know. Um, things have names, things have, you know, things so that a human operator can get through it. Uh, but it still takes some very highly specialized skill to really understand all the things a computer might be saying and to type in precisely what it is you want. And the computer can get confused, and this causes bugs. And bugs really do come from, like, typos, you know, and just simple things that you did this, that, or wrong, and it sends off a whole cascade of other things that go wrong, and it's crazy. So, Simon E. Let's come up with this idea with intentional programming. And the idea of it is the computer stores not actually text, but rather your intention. So you express your intention, you express the basic idea of the program in any number of ways, and the computer can show it back to you in any other number of ways. So one of the early things uh, when Microsoft was developing this, not anymore, and Charles is off on his own deal, um, but they did some little video where it was like, okay, Let's say we have two people editing the same program at exactly the same time. Right? One of them renames a function and moves it to another place. The other one is simultaneously editing the text of that function. Now, as it normally works, the thing is the, the, the program itself is a text file. So whomever logs out of this text file last, his version gets saved. So let's say it's the guy editing the interior of that function. Well, suddenly that function is going to be back in its old place and will have its old name again, but with his new interior. Or the opposite can happen if that first person is the last person to log out. An intentional program, though, uh, that text is really just a representation of the deeper logic of the program. So it figures out that when the guy was editing this function here with this name, he really means this function over here, which has now been moved and has a different name. So now people can start editing this a little more fluidly. And it's more than just allowing people to edit the thing simultaneously, it's editing it in any given way. Okay? Uh, so you could have a program and you go to a computer, show me this program in C++. And it will. It'll just it'll look at the logic, it figures out how, how you would say, say that in C++, and translates it for you. Show me this program in Java. 
Show me this program in freaking basic if you want. It'll be like millions of lines long, I'm sure. Um, but it can it can generate that anything you want. And then here comes interesting. You can do entirely new languages. Maybe languages that aren't even based off of text. You can do flowchart diagrams. You can do voice for all I care. You can do just sound to represent your program. You can do anything. And so what you can do is uh, teach the computer a new a language, essentially, um, that's fit for the people who want whatever program it is we're creating. So I'm give you an example. Uh, they're doing they're doing some tests right now. Intentional programming as it is, it's gotten to the point where they're using intentional programming to edit the intentional programming software. So they have something. They're also doing a few tests, a few non-disclosure agreement and all these things. Um, there are a few tests with a couple of outside companies. One of them was making a program to help you plan your retirement. And this was ridiculously complicated. And part of the fact, problem this is, and as Charles Sonny puts it, uh, he said, have programmers become encryption experts or encryption errors, encryption machines, whatever. The way it is is you have the original intention of whoever wants this program, the people who know about retirement plans. Okay, make a computer program that does that for me. And they have to explain it to the, to the programmers. The programmers have to figure out how on earth to represent this to the computer, and then they have to type it all in. And with a few typos and a few misunderstandings, a few, and suddenly it takes just ridiculous amounts of money to actually make it work and get through all the bugs and make it efficient and make it, you know. Uh, and things just get messy. Anyone who works in software development knows that there's just so many bugs that come out of nowhere. In large part because there's no direct connection between the original domain experts as he calls them, the people who know about retirement, and the computer. Well now, right, the programmer guys can just write some basic system that will allow the retirement experts to express what they want to the computer. And I think the example he used, there was like tables. It was like kind of like Excel. And you're like, okay, you know, and you type a word here, and you type a value here, and you type a, you know, things that the average person can understand. And then, through some really complex stuff, the computer, uh, or the, the, the generator as they call it, uh, takes all that, puts it into an intention, and then, since computers still run on uh, regular software, it translates that into, let's say, C++, and then it gives that C++ to the computer, the rest of the computer, that is, and that runs as a program then. Right? And that, well, actually, there's a step in between because, of course, you give it C, and then C in turn translates to machine code. You know, it's not always in source code. And then the machine code runs. But now we've gone a step meta. A step where anybody, in theory, can edit this thing. So it's like the difference between an image of a text file on the one hand and a text file on the other hand. An image, the computer will understand, like, okay, there's a white pixel here and a black pixel here, and it knows all that, but doesn't that's all it knows. And it takes a human to say, okay, this is the letter R, and this is the letter S, and this is a word, and this is a sentence, and this is a, you know. But you go with an actual text file, the computer knows which letter is which. That's the basic information it has, and then it can display that text in any manner at once. You can do different fonts. You can do, you know, different sizes, and you can do different uh, different ways of doing your columns, and different ways of, you know, adding spaces here and there, and page breaks, and, and all these and all these crazy things, right? Whereas metaphorically speaking, to do that in programming, uh, you essentially need to rewrite the program. If you want to do this, you know, in C++, you want to do this in Java, you want to do this in flowcharts. You can actually program through flowcharts, but it's highly specialized, and you have to. Spend a whole bunch of people just to design that language. If you have intentional programming or something, uh, designing that language now becomes not much of a problem. You can have like infinite languages. 